Hi guys, uh, it's week six video review. So on their Blackboard, you should be able to download uh, this week's file. I have got it posted. So once you've downloaded it, here it is. Uh, so we've got a few pictures here. We've got Angelina and Jolie, Brad Pitt, photo with acne, a second photo. We've got a guy before he's worked out and after. Couple pictures of old guys, old women, Scarlett Johansson, and this is a little image example of someone who's used Photoshop to modify their body. So this week is all about body modification. So the first um, project we'll be doing is sort of removing the acne from here. So go ahead, but then for the homework, you're supposed to do this one, so I'll go ahead and just do that one. So I'm going to right click on it, open with Photoshop. Okay. So we're actually going to be using the same tools that we used for the photo touch up from last week. So go ahead and just duplicate this layer. So select it and then hit Command J, or you can grab it and drag it to the new layer icon. So once you've made a duplicate, we can go ahead and start cleaning it up. So um, let's see. We'll be using mostly the heel brush, the patch tool, and the stamp tool. So let's first just by using the stamp tool. So you're going to select an area you want to sample from. So hold Option and click, and then paint over the spot you want to correct. So let me try that again. And it does a pretty good job, but we've also got these other options. So we've got the Patch Tool. You can get to that by pressing J. You outline the selection you want to remove, like you would with a lasso, and then click and drag inside, and move it to the area you want to sample from. So I'm going to let go and it sort of samples all around it to kind of blend it in with its surroundings. So I'm going to select there, grab it there, and just continue doing that. Does a pretty good job. Now there's also the spot healing brush which you basically just draw on it and it cleans it up. So it's pretty good if you're in a hurry. You just make really quick corrections, although sometimes it can cause problems. Like if you clean up an area close to where there's some detail, like let's see here. See, it might not sample from the right area. So it's sort of picking and choosing on its own where it samples from. So you don't have quite as much control, and that can lead to it sort of making some not good aesthetic decisions. So if you want more control, there's the healing brush tool, which is like the stamp tool, but it just uses the same algorithm that the spot healing brush and the patch tool use in where it kind of samples from around the area to blend it in. So I'm going to hold option, click, and then paint, and it will blend it in with its surroundings. So just kind of continue doing that. And I, rec I recommend switching between the three tools. So right here, since we're next to some detail, I'm going to sample from this edge and then I'll line it up, line it up here and then paint. Oops. You you can also get rid of moles too if you want. I'm going to switch to the patch tool because I like 
the results from that a little better. Okay, so almost done here. Hmm. All right, looks like we got it cleaned up pretty well, uh, but there's still a little bit of redness. So what I'm gonna do now is create a new layer and set it to color. And then I'm going to switch to the brush tool. And since I set it to color, it's only when I paint, I'm going to sample some colors that are not so red. And when I paint on the areas that are, it's only affecting the color. It's not affecting the brightness or anything else like that. So we're essentially just removing the red color, but we're not actually just to demonstrate, if I were to change this to normal mode, you'd see it completely covers it up and sort of makes it look really foggy. And if I set it to multiply, it's going to darken it. If I set it to screen, it's going to lighten it. So color is just going to affect the color alone. So. And there you have it. And what you can do additionally is um, use the levels or some other tool, like a, some other type of adjustment to brighten up the image a bit. So you notice here it's a little brighter. Um, so I'm gonna use the marquee. So you can get to that. It's right here or you can press M we're going to just select this photo and when we choose the adjustment layer which is down here it's going to take my selection and use that as a mask so it won't affect anything else so I'm going to switch to curves and adjust it make it a little brighter and you notice this part doesn't get affected so sort of like that and I'm going to show a quick before and after. So, voila. Okay, so on to the next project. Um, next, we want to take this guy and sort of get him into shape. Sort of like, whoops, sort of like they did with this demonstration. Um, they, looks like, you know, tightened up his midsection here, gave him more muscle definition. Um, but what they actually did for this photo shoot is, um, for this photo, just to help out a bit, he actually, you know, kind of sucked his gut in and he smiled and sort of had better posture and they shaved his chest. But, um, but then they further changed him in Photoshop so there was some pre Photoshop differences but they just kind of enhanced it even more so we're going to do the same thing to this guy so here's the actual after but we're gonna try to sort of fake it so go ahead and right click that open it with Photoshop okay First of all, I just want to get rid of this date. So I'm going to duplicate this layer. So Command J. All right, I'm going to select the date with the marquee tool. That's M again. 
and you can actually take that selection and transfer it over to the patch tool. So when I click on the patch, I can actually take that and just drag it, and voila, the date's gone. And let's get rid of this light here too, or light switch. And as you can see, it kind of left a little gray, so you might have to use the stamp tool. So S is the hotkey for that. So I'm going to click sample from that area and paint. And then maybe just use the smudge tool. So it's right here. And just smudge it a bit. OK. So um, first of all, let's just focus on his form. So what we can do is use a tool called Liquify. So that's under Filter, Liquify. And it's going to think for a little bit. But what this does is it kind of turns your your photo into silly putty and lets you push push it around and um, just kind of stretch certain areas. So uh, you should select this very top tool. And the way you want to use it is just to click and drag, and that's going to move the area. It's going to st stretch it. I'm going to use actually a bigger brush, so I'm going to hit the bracket keys. So first I just want to build up his trapezoid muscles. So drag those up. And you want to make sure they're symmetrical. So drag that up. And also subtlety is the key. That might look a little too big, so I'm going to bring it in. And right here, so this is the deltoid and then the trapezius and the clavicle. So I want to show a little definition between the deltoid and the trapezius. So I'm going to actually bring that in a little bit. Same with this spot. Let's bring out the neck muscle a little bit. I can have a stronger neck. OK, so let's bring out the deltoid. So just grow the brush and just stretch that out. And these are just little subtle movements. You don't want to be too extreme with it. All right, so let's bring the shoulder out. So now where the deltoid connects next to the bicep and tricep, I'm going to have a little dip so you can see some definition there. I'm going to bring the forearm, forearm out a bit, make it look a little stronger here. Same with here. OK, and then let's bring these up a bit. So I'm going to use a bigger brush. OK. Now let's uh, bring that gut in. So let's just stretch that up so that the waistband isn't hanging down. And then also, let's bring his waist in a bit. So you'll notice it's kind of stretching the arm in with it too. Uh, you can actually create a mask to prevent that area from being affected. So let's go to the mask brush tool and we're going to paint off that section to keep it from being affected. And same with this, whoops, this part. Now it's, it's not going to be perfect, but it's going to help just a little bit. So notice it still stretches, but if I drag over here, see it's not affecting this part that I'm clicking on. So it'll help a bit, but it might not help too much. It 
might have helped if he had had his arms out to the side a bit more. Okay, and then to get rid of the mask, just over here under mask options, just click none. And his arms got messed up a little bit. So I'm going to actually mask off the opposite. And then bring that in. And then, yeah, this got messed up too. So I'm going to mask that off. And what we can actually do is use a brush tool and just paint in the wall right there since there wasn't really a gap on this side. Also, these are all lopsided, so um, I'm going to turn the mask off. I'm just going to bring this up to match the other side. And then I'm just going to bring his abs in a bit. Okay, so I'd say that's a pretty big improvement. Maybe these look a little too big, so I'm going to bring them in just a bit. Okay, so hit OK. And you'll notice, zonk, he gets into shape really fast. So before, after, before, after, much better. Uh, so what we need to do now is, well, first of all, let's fix this little gap here. So I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to use the lasso tool. And I'm just going to select this area that we want to fill in with the wall. And in fact, even around here, like we don't want his legs like coming clear out here. So let's actually draw an area for his legs. And then same for this area. So I'm going to hold shift and click to add to the selection. All right. And I'm actually going to create a new layer for this. So New layer icon, switch to my brush, hold option, so I select this color. In fact, I'm just going to use the stamp tool. So press S, sample from this here, color, and then paint in there. And then you'll need to resample a few times. Trying to get the color to match. And then this side. So sample here. And then we'll just need to smudge it a bit so it blends a little better. So I'm going to press R to get the smudge tool. And it's a little too strong. I'm going to turn the strength down to about 60. I'm also going to soften my brush. And you can soften a brush by clicking on the brush icon up here and turning the hardness down. So there we go, a little better. I'm still going to turn the strength down. looks better. Now obviously I could go in and be a lot cleaner but for the purpose of this demo I'm just going to show you the basic concepts. So we've got his arm out there looks a little messed up here but you know. So now I'm just going to add a little definition with lighting to his body. So create a new layer and set this to soft light 
choose the default colors so black and white so you can click here or you can press D and switch to the brush tool let's make it so it's not hard so it's already pretty low let's set the opacity a little lower and I'm gonna add a little more shadow here and obviously that's way too dark so I'm gonna turn the opacity down even more and I'm just adding shadows and then a little definition here the clavicles under the bicep here on the forearm muscles under the bicep here add a little definition here under the deltoid And then let's add some definition to the abs. So just draw in here. And then also to here. And then we can actually go in and draw the individual rows. if we press X we can add highlights so I'm going to add a little highlight here and here and then also to the biceps and here and then to the abs hmm <laughs> I might, and if it looks too obvious, you can just click that layer and turn the opacity down. All right, so now we've got before, after, before, after. Okay, let's do one last thing and let's remove some of his chest hair or body hair. So I'm actually gonna turn these off so I can see a little better. I'm going to select this layer, which is the modified muscle layer, and I'm going to press J and switch to the patch tool. I'm going to select that little row here and just drag it over. Select that. And then some of this. Now this is going to be a little harder, um, but let's, let's try it. here see I'd say that's well let's let's try it's just that there's going to be some definition here in the middle and it might look weird without it but I don't know, it looks all right. We might have to fix that in the dodge and burn layer. So let's go in here with a smaller brush and maybe more opacity, so 50%. There we go. Maybe 30. And there you have it, before, after. Okay. Next, we're going to make uh, Brad Pitt look like he's 40 years older than he is. 
So we're going to take him and combine his face with pieces of this photo. Or, whoops, or this photo if you want. Let's see. Uh, let's go ahead and go with this one since they're both black and white. So right click, open with Photoshop, and then right click on Brad, open in Photoshop. So let's go ahead and press Command A to select all, or you can go to select all right here, and then copy it. So edit, copy, or Command C. On Windows, it'll be Control C, and just paste them right over top. All right, let's press F so we get full screen. And for this picture, don't worry about converting it to a smart object. Just hit Command T, hold Option, and drag the corner, and that'll stretch it in all directions. If we don't hold Option, it'll just drag it in one direction. So I guess it's up to you. I think this is a little faster. But let's try to align it to Brad's face. So. You can turn the opacity down just to get it to match a little better. Whoops. So let's see, his eyes are there, his lips are there. We may have to stretch him a bit. And it's not going to be perfect, but we just want a general alignment. So go ahead and hit OK. And actually, I'm going to turn the opacity down a bit more. We can use the Warp tool to match it even better. So Command T, and then right click on it and choose Warp. So, let's see. I'm trying to match the ears up a little better. And then the mouth. And the nose and the forehead. Okay. So that looks about right. So we're going to hit OK. Now, let's turn it back up to 100%. Ooh, he got, kind of got stretched out a bit. Um, and what we're going to do is just break up this picture into the different sections. So section four is eyes, his nose, his mustache, and then just his forehead and just various wrinkles. And what we're going to do is try to blend those into the photo below. So I'm going to select with the lasso tool, his uh, left eye. And don't try to select it too closely. We want to have some breathing room for when we mask it. So once you selected it, hit Command J. And I'm going to close this. You can see his eye is on his own layer. And go ahead and name the layer. So double click on its name. I'm going to call that I left. Okay, now I'll select the forehead. And now, before you hit Command J, you've got to select the full layer again. So, Command J. And we're going to title that forehead. Now we're going to select his other eye. I'm going to go ahead and include the crow's feet there. So Command J, call that I R. And naming these layers, well, it's always a good habit to name layers, but it'll help you to stay a little more organized. And it'll make it easier when you're trying to find which layer you want to select. So now I'm going to select these uh, wrinkles around the cheek. So Command J and call that cheek L and the other cheek.
click here, Command J, Cheek R. And the nose and mustache. So, and we'll do the mouth too. Command J. Let's call that nose mouth. And the chin. Command J. Chin. All right, so now we have all the parts we want to work with. Let's turn off that layer. And, oh, left eye. Now let's uh, focus on one section at a time. So first is chin. So turn the opacity down. And let's try to fit it into place a little better. So with the chin layer selected, hit Command T. And then right click and choose Warp. So now we're going to just kind of fit it into place. Okay. Once we've done that, we're going to click the mask icon and switch to the brush tool, scale it up a bit. You should have a black brush selected. or So if you don't, press D for the default color. And we're going to start masking away the parts we don't want. And so right now the opacity is really low on mine, so I'm going to turn it up to 100. And you'll want to make sure the mode is set to normal, too. So now I'm just masking away so it blends in better. And it blended pretty well. Now you can turn the light layer on and off. It looks like it's a little darker than his chin. So I'm going to click on it. Well, actually what you can do is just go to the very top, select the very top layer, and then create a new layer, and set it to soft light, and then use the white color to sort of lighten it up a bit. OK, so now we're moving on to the next part, his mouth and nose. So select it, turn the opacity down, move it into place, turn it down a little more. I'm going to hit Command T, right click, choose Warp. Try to match it to his nose a bit better. Although noses tend to get bigger with age. But um, there it is. And then the mouth. Seems to match pretty well. Hit OK. Um, turn the opacity back up. And now let's create a mask. And let's blend it in. He's got a nice fuzzy mustache now. Okay, next is the cheeks. So just like that. Move it. That's about right. And then Command T. Choose Warp. Move this into place. Hit OK. Do the mask. So you're probably seeing a trend by now. Hopefully. Okay, now the other side. Command T, warp. Choose the mask, start blending it in. Okay. Now the right eye. 
bring it down. Man T warp. Okay. Now the eye is a bit trickier. I'm going to turn the mask on because we don't want him to look too squinty and we want to keep Brad Pitt's original eye. So first I'm just going to blend the edges. If you've ever masked too much, you can just switch the color to white by pressing X and just painting it back in. But yeah, I don't want his eye completely hidden, so I'm going to switch to the white or the black, sorry, and paint his eye back in. And then I'm going to switch back to uh, white and then hide it. And I might actually turn the opacity down on that. And you can do that with any of these. All right, now I'm going to do that with the left eye. So turn the opacity down a bit, Command T, make sure it's in place. Looks about right. Hit Enter, turn on the mask, turn the opacity up, switch to the brush, and start blending. And then I'm just going to hide his, reveal his eye. And maybe turn the opacity down. Okay. Forehead, Command T. Kind of stretch it into place first. And then, actually, do the warp. Okay. And do the mask again. Press B. And hide. And actually, for this layer, I'm going to set it to multiply. So that way we can get the original shading of Brad a bit better. Okay, <laughs> there he is. So before, after. Now it doesn't look perfect, but you know, you can go in there and just finesse it. You can spend as long as, oops, I'm gonna turn the opacity down. Spend as much time as you want just going in and finessing it. And just by going in there and, you know, masking different stuff or unmasking just till it looks more realistic. Now we have this uh, soft light layer on the top. Let's go in there and let's bring out some of these wrinkles a bit more. So I'm going to switch to a black brush, maybe lower the opacity like 30 and just kind of increase the bags under his eyes and then you can switch to, to white and bring out more highlights Okay, and then maybe bring out his cheekbones a bit more. 
And you can always erase stuff too. So, oops. All right. So now if that looks too intense, you can just turn the opacity down. So there you have it, Brad Pitt. Now you can do the same thing using the same principles with uh, Angelina's Angelina Jolie's photo and just mixing her with either of these two photos or both. So, um, so that's that. Your homework is to do Angelina Jolie's photo and to clean up the acne on this photo. So there you have it. Thanks.